Hello, Steve at Missouri Western State University, the Fighting Griffins. This is Matthew with FreePrescriptionLenses.com, the Fighting Eyeglass Maker. And today I'm going to make prescription lenses with Transitions Gray and Crizal Provencia for your Rayman 5206 color 5505, which is the gray gradient in the 54 eye size. So let me begin. I'm going to take everything out of the original packaging as it comes to me. Your hard shell, clam shell. Hello, I'm a clam. <laughs> Good, I hope none of that was in focus. Um, okay, yeah, your hard shell case, your Ray-Ban cleaning cloth, and your Ray-Ban frame, which comes with a little plastic sleeve on the left temple to protect the temples from rubbing together while it's being shipped. And I will keep that on there when I ship to you, but I'm gonna take it off for now. This is your frame, the gray gradient. Hopefully you can see those colors as they come up in there. And don't take my word for it. This is the Ray-Ban 5206, color 5515, and the 54 eye size with the 18 bridge. So, let's go ahead and begin. I'm going to take out your original demo lenses, one of which says Ray-Ban. Put that in the tray. Take your frame, put it in the tracing out of my edger, and hit start. A little stylus is about to pop up, and it's going to go around and trace the shape of the right side of the frame before doing the same thing on the left side here at freeprescriptionlenses.com where everyone loves a bargain but I love a cup of coffee more. No, everyone loves a bargain and no one is disappointed with quality. You buy a genuine authentic Ray-Ban frame and you will receive one free pair of clear single vision prescription lenses or non-prescription fashion lenses. My receipts have my federal ID tax number so if you have vision insurance or flex dollars you will get reimbursed for this purchase whether they are prescription or not. Steve, you know you need prescription and you paid the upgrade to Transitions Gray and Crizal Provencia. Of course, this is the shape, that green outline. Can you see that? That is the shape of the lens we will be cutting. I will magnify it. Now your pupillary distance for your right eye is 35. We're going to go ahead and put that there. And we're going to put an optical center height of 18. Now I'm going to go ahead and take your lenses, come down here to my lensometer, my lens ometer, and we're gonna put the axis wheel on 105. And you're gonna say, wait, that's not my prescription. And we'll get to that in a minute. Just take my word for it. So let's see, minus one, minus one and a quarter at 105. I have a, now see you are unique. You have the same power in both eyes, only the axis is different. So I have to sit there and guess, you know what else is neat? No, they're about the same size. It just looked like one was larger than the other. So 105, put the power drum. Let's actually put it on zero. Yep, see I moved the prism ring and now I'm bringing it back to center. We're gonna put that on minus one. Put the lens in, rotate into the sphere of power. Spherical power comes in clearly. Find the optical center of the lens. Check your astigmatism correction. That's there. Hang on, hang on. And this is the right lens, but we're gonna rotate it this way. Find the optical center again. Check your astigmatism correction. Everything is lining up and I'm gonna put three dots on your lenses, only which two can be seen. Do I have a pen in my pocket? I do, so let me take that out. And I'm gonna put a third one on there. This is the right lens. We will now do the same thing for the left lens, but we're gonna turn the axis wheel to 75, from 105 to 75. Still on minus one, we're gonna put it in. Find the optical center of your lens, check your astigmatism correction, and again we're going to put three dots on this lens. Hey, the, the third dot's getting a little better. Third dot's getting better. We're going to put an L on here, which Latin stands for not right. Put that pen back in my pocket. Bring your lenses back down here, as we say here in North Carolina. Put your lens onto the platform. Now, oh, see? I've already got them dotted up. Okay, this is a block, or as I like to call them, Jenny from the block. I need to attach this to your lens while it is cutting inside the edger. So I need a double-sided adhesive sticker, of which I will pull one off to demonstrate here. The black side is the sticky side. I'm gonna stick that onto this block. Now on the back is a silver button. It's gonna do its job twice tonight. The first time I will set this down. Actually, you know what? Let's go ahead and pull the sticker off to expose the black sticky side. I'm gonna line that magnet up with something magnetical there in the arm. Get the second one ready. See, I, I did them all ahead of time. And 
The reason why I put those three dots on there is it tells me that it's lined up in there perfectly. So the blue cross is the geometric center of your frame. Your eye is just above that in that orange line. So I'm going to get that lined up there. I'm going to minify the picture. Yep, making sure the lens is large enough to fit in there. You can see my finger. Hey, fingers. You see my fingers in there? Okay, so let's magnify that again so I can dial in that crosshairs of a scope perfectly. Okay, there we are. There we are. There we are. Get everything lined up optical center those two dots are lined up where they're supposed to be hit that button the arm comes down and places the block onto the right lens let's do the same thing now for the unright lens grab one of these pull the paper away make the black side sticky line up that magnet with the one there on the arm now your pupillary distance for your left eye is 34 it has mirrored your right so it automatically comes up as 35 we're going to bring that down to 34 keep the OC height the optical center let's yeah that lens is large enough always like to see to make sure it's going to cut out to make sure I do have the right and the left should I say that out loud hit that button the arms gonna come down place the block onto the left lens now the reason why I say that is your lens can go in there either way like this or like that and so when you're the same in both eyes it helps me tell I've got it oriented just perfectly and now this is the edger this is what costs forty thousand dollars it weighs 200 pounds. I tell everyone to go out and buy their own. Put it on your kitchen counter. You don't need that toaster there anyway. <laughs> you're using, you're not eating those Lego waffles anymore. But put it on your kitchen counter. Then you can cut your own glasses at home and tell funnier jokes than the ones I can tell. So, the actual cutting wheel is over here on the far right. It will move into the center once it starts up. But that, that white residue is lens material. It's like a rough sandpaper to grind your lens down until it's the final size. This wheel in the center or that channel, that little valley, that's what's going to put the bevel onto the lens so it stays inside the bevel of the frame. So let's go ahead and take the right lens. Now the magnet's going to do its job a second time tonight. It's going to hold it in place into the chuck. Or if you know my videos, you know that I always like to call it the Charles because I don't know this machine well enough to call it chuck. I'm going to wake up the computer. That is the shape of the lens we will be cutting tonight. These are polycarbonate lenses. If they were plastic, Hindex plastic, or Trivix, I would select that. I love this one, to be determined later, TBD. But we're going to keep it as polycarb. There's no need to polish the edge of your lenses because they will not be seen. Come on, get off of there. We go. I'm not going to put a bevel on the front surface of your lens, the convex surface. I'm only going to put a bevel onto the rear concave surface of the lens. I'm going to hit the green button, which is start in every language. The door closes, the clamp shuts, and then the lens is going to be traced by two white styluses, making sure that it's large enough to fit into the frame, which I saw on the diagram before. You can see as it's going around tracing the shape. And as always, measuring the thickness of the lens at every point to know exactly precisely where to place the bevel so you have the least amount of edge thickness showing. But of course, in this frame, you won't have any but it's just a routine procedure it does. And of course, I cut very high prescriptions all day long, which by the way, are free with the purchase of any frame. And it is more critical with a stronger prescription. Now, when you see light flickering in the background, that is water running there to catch the optical sawdust as it is ejected off of the lens from the cutting wheel. But polycarbonate lenses cut dry where plastic, high index plastic and Trivex cut wet. Now you will see water sprayed onto the lens it does that just to wash away any optical debris in the last 20 seconds of the cutting cycle. Now your lenses are made out of polycarbonate. Polycarb is 40% thinner and lighter than regular plastic. They are virtually unbreakable. They are bulletproof up to 22 caliber and have both UVA and UVB protection built into the lens. We know what the sun's harmful ultraviolet rays can do to your skin there in St. Joseph's, Missouri. But your eyes are eight times more sensitive than your skin, so you have permanent sunscreen for your eyes. Unlike the lotions, creams, and sprays that need to be reapplied every couple hours when you're in direct exposure to the sun, this is permanent and never needs to be reapplied. Now, if you notice, your lens is flat all the way around, just like a nickel. If I were to take it out now, it would stand up on the counter on its own. But it's, it's double checking itself to see where to place the bevel. It will soon go down onto the bevel wheel to get the knife-like bevel. A very dull knife like me, but knife like bevel nonetheless. But your lens will be so sharp afterwards that you'll be able to cut through a piece of wet tissue, providing that you soak the tissue in water overnight. 
then take your lens press down very hard and you might be able to cut through the tissue so now it's getting the v-shaped bevel now you do have transitions which i will show you later but you also have an anti-glare coating Crizol Provencia of all things so that is three features in one it eliminates glare when driving at night particularly driving at night in the rain but street lights stop lights computer screens overhead fluorescent lights which is what i was looking at a second ago but it's also a reflection free lens you can see how there's no light reflecting off in fact you get a purplish hue hence the name Prevencia. it is purplish Prevencia is designed to block today's harmful ultraviolet or the blue blocking rays that you get from today's electronic devices this is the best the most premium Crizol coating that you can possibly get that has been tested to show that the harmful blue light that's emitted from today's machines can cause sleep deprivation ADD in kids as well as other biological features so this coating will eliminate all of that now you do see water spraying onto the lens that was to wash it that little wheel was putting the safety bevel onto the back surface I will take the lens out let me grab Ooh, I'm getting close one of my last paper towels and whoever I use the last paper towel on always has to buy me a new roll that's how it goes so the lens is dried off I'm just gonna do a quick inspection I'm gonna go ahead and mount it into the frame I'm gonna tuck it in at the outside corner using my thumbs I press down the nose it snaps right in let's go ahead and do the same thing now for the unright lens we're gonna flip that over to L put that in and hit start just like before the door closes the clamp shuts and then the lens is gonna be traced by two white styluses just like before making sure that it's large enough to fit into the frame and you can see as it's going around follow my finger as it follows that and then as always measuring the thickness of the lens to know exactly and precisely where to place the bevel so you have the least amount of edge thickness showing and look no edge thickness whatsoever but one thing I was saying let me take this block off it does eliminate glare when driving an item from computer screens but it's also a cosmetic quality where when someone's looking at you they're not looking at their reflection in your glasses so if someone takes a picture or you take a selfie you won't see that flash lit up in your lens you'll see just your eyes now the third feature that i like Crizol put, puts the industry's hardest scratch coating on every lens because the machine that applies this it actually applies seven different layers of coatings it takes over 24 hours to apply the Crizol anti-glare so because of that because of the time and investment they put the hardest scratch coating possible so we're going to turn this back to 105 it's on here somewhere there it is halfway between 100 and 110 we're going to put it in and i'm getting minus one let's check your astigmatism correction and i'm getting minus two and a quarter now that is because your prescription reads minus one minus one and a quarter at 105 so the unit of measurement we use goes in quarter increments 0 0.25 0 0.50 0 0.75 one you are far i'm sorry you are nearsighted with your glasses off everything is much larger than it really appears that's why there is a minus sign your lenses will minify down to the correct size so you have four steps of minification now you have an additional five steps of astigmatism correction there is a stigma over the word astigmatism it just means shape like someone has straight hair someone else has curly hair you don't freak out when you hear that that's the same thing you have one curve on your eye which is minus one this way you have a second curve on your eye here which is another one and a quarter giving you a total of two and a quarter and that's how we line those curves up at the 105 meridian that makes everything nice and crisp astigmatism is what makes sixes and eights look alike or the letters p and f so you're the same powers in both eyes but we're going to turn that fine tune knob to 105 for the right eye we're going to turn it to 75 for the left now when you sent your prescription in you wrote it as minus two and a quarter plus one and a quarter at 015. now years ago and doctors who are at the top of the pecking order can write the prescription however they want nowadays we make prescription glasses with minus cylinder which is your astigmatism correction on the back surface of the lens years ago it was on the front surface of the lens giving you a biconcave lens and no one liked that so they moved it to the back making that a minus plus on the front minus on the back of a lens so you have to algebraically add these two together remember high school algebra where you tell your teacher i'll never do this on my job well i have to so in order to take this prescription to make it look like this which is the same prescription there's two different ways to do it 
you algebraically add these two together. Minus two and a quarter. If someone owed you two dollars and twenty-five cents and they gave you a dollar twenty-five, they would still owe you one dollar. You change the astigmatism from a plus to a minus, that number stays the same, but you change the axis by 90 degrees. So 15, a straight line is zero to 180. You cannot go under zero, you cannot go over 180. So we're at, started at 15, you add 90, we end up at 105. When we do the same thing for the left, minus two and a quarter, minus one and a quarter, add those together, you get minus one, minus one and a quarter. You cannot go above 180, so we subtract 90, and we end up with 75. Now. When I was in school, you would actually draw a cross and put the powers on there, plus two and a quarter, and then minus one and a quarter here. And the cool thing is, this is called the optical cross. And when you learn how to transpose prescriptions, as this is called, you have to, your teacher would always tell you, put this on the optical cross. So Steve, this is a pleasure of me to introduce this first time live on the air. I have a new project that I'm working on. It's a pair of cross-shaped lenses that I'm not sure yet whether I can put the prescription in them, but I've called it the Optical Cross. So if anyone out there watching this video, go to OpticalCross.com. And actually, here, here's a bit of fun. Where's my phone? Where'd I do it? I had it plugged in, charging it. Okay, let's go ahead and pull up. I hope I'm not boring you. Home photos here. Come on Dropbox, hopefully nothing embarrassing pops up. Come on, come on. And let's go back a screen. God, why is my phone so slow? I'm charging it. There we go. Well, I'm actually wearing it there, but you can't see it. Um, better yet, let's go to... I had my waitress wear it the other night. Can you guys see that? Is it the camera in focus? Cross-shaped lenses. Let me see if I can find a better close-up. If we go to this one, I have a pair of clear lenses and a pair of sunglass lenses mounted into a drill mount frame. A drill mount frame is like, well, hang on, I got one around here somewhere, like this. But instead of this shape, this rectangular shape, I have cross-shaped lenses. So I have two holes drilled on each side. So anyone out there, go to opticalcross.com and you can see my latest project. I'm currently the only one in the world doing it. Let's see if it pays off. So. I do not cut them on this machine. This $40,000 machine is not capable of cutting those lenses. I have to go to hire someone else to do it for me. It is a $300,000 edger. Now the drill bit that can do it, this can actually drill too for fun. Let's show you how the machine works. You're getting, going into the belly of the beast now. I'm gonna close the door again. I'm gonna pull out the equipment out and where's my stylus? There is, where's my flashlight? There is a drill bit. That is what actually, this is what comes out to put the safety bevel onto the lens. There is a drill bit here that will drill holes in the lens to do that. In fact, here's one other little fun thing. I am doing my state of North Carolina. That will be on the website soon. The North Carolina Tar Heels are Carolina blue, so I'm putting a blue tint on there. And that will actually now be mounted into a frame like this and so we'll just see how popular they are i was actually doing a little bit of tinting on there putting it in the the blue tint i can change the color of any tint there to see how that turns out but that will be on the website too give me about a week so enough of that i know you want to see your glasses being made but i'm just very pleased to announce that it's taken me over a year to find someone who could actually capable of drilling lenses in those shapes and I'm very pleased to announce the website. Have I mentioned it lately? Opticalcross.com. So I'm going to tuck the lenses in at the outside corner using my thumbs. Press that down at the nose. Come down here. Stylus, don't get lost. We're going to come back down there. So spin the fine tune knob to 75. Put that in over the red dot, your pupillary distance. Check the power and I'm getting, oops, come on flashlight. I'm getting minus one. Check the astigmatism correction. We're getting minus an additional one and a quarter, giving us a total. When you add minus one and one and a quarter together, you get minus two and a quarter. Your pupillary distance, 35 for the right, 34 for the left, for a combined value of 69. I'm gonna turn the card around so you can see. But I'm gonna put the PD stick against the thumb on the 
right lens when we look on the left lens we're getting 69 millimeters I want to check the optical center height on here as well that's perfect now let me go ahead and clean your lenses off in fact let me give them a real good cleaning a little spray cleaning now this is what your lenses look like clear I will activate them in just a moment but when you get these in the mail in St. Joseph's, Missouri, home to Missouri Western State University, the Fighting Griffins. When you get these in the mail, there's a small chance that these could fit too loose or too tight. However, there's an 80% chance that one side is going to sit higher than the other. That is because 80% of people have one ear that is higher than the other, and I'm no different, and I'll show you in just a moment. But if you stop by, because of that statistic, 99% of all shops will do free adjustments if you ask them. So just stop in and tell them what needs to be adjusted and they'll be glad to do it for you. But I'm going to get these in standard alignment first. Also known as a three-point stance. The three points are one, two, and the bottom of the frame being three. I set them on the counter, press down, there is no wobble. And when I say wobble, I'll take mine off. I press down on the counter and they wobble there, but they sit level on me. My right ear is lower than my left. So press down, there is no wobble close each temple to make sure they overlap perfectly and none of the temples are askew. Check the tension on each spring hinge to make sure that is the same. Now I field test every premium microfiber cloth that I pass out and mail to you to make sure that it works. So if you get a wrinkle in it you know that it works. You also get your Ray-Ban cleaning cloth and I provide instructions on how to care not only for your lenses and frames so they last for years but your cleaning cloths and case so those two will last you for years. Steve, I'm also sending out a selfie request. I'd love to have your picture on the website rocking these things at a school event. But this is what your lenses look like clear. I'm going to go ahead and activate them in my transitions box, which essentially has a whole bunch of UV light that's going to bombard the lenses. But as you can see, it takes about 30 to 45 seconds for transition lenses to darken. It takes a little bit longer when you come back inside. 45 seconds to a minute to a minute 15. Now this is important, Stephen, pay attention. All transition lenses get dark on day one. Give them two weeks of exposure to the sun and they're gonna to continue to darken every day for the first two weeks. After that, they will work for years with maximum performance. The only time they won't work is when you're behind the windshield of a car, your windshield absorbs all the sun's harmful ultraviolet rays so your dashboard doesn't crack. So that's why they don't turn dark in a car. Now, if you have a convertible or a motorcycle, they will darken. Now, as soon as you step out of a car, they will darken. Oh, my wife is texting me. Let's see what she has to say. Um, but, so that's it. They're also temperature sensitive. So when it's 90 degrees and above, they don't get as dark as they will when it's 85 and below. So that is the first time they've been activated. Don't worry, they're going to keep getting darker and darker. <coughs> so that's it. I hope you enjoyed watching as I cut your prescription lenses with Crizol Provencia. The the best Crizol coating out there. That's why it has a little purplish hue to it. Hence the name Prevencia, Purple Prevencia. But it's in the ultraviolet spectrum where blue is in the ultraviolet, believe it or not. And that's what it's blocking out. So, if anyone has any questions, just email me at freeprescriptionlenses.com. If anyone has any questions about the optical cross, you can go to that website, click contact me, and you can reach me that way too. So, Steve in St. Joseph's, Missouri at Missouri State Western University. I hope you enjoyed watching as I cut prescription lenses for your Ray-Ban 5206, color 5515, which is the gray gradient in the 54 eye size. And hopefully everyone else got the chance to see how I bring that love and feeling back to glasses. Thank you.